Puyat ako ah. Ano yung iniinom mo? 3 in 1? Saan sinabi mo para binili kita nito? Mm. Mm. Okay lang. Kahit mas mahal yan, this will also do the job. Parang ito. Hey guys, Jamil here from Auto Industria and what I have for you is the 2020 free Suzuki Espresso. As you can see, not much has changed for this year model, but Suzuki has introduced a new transmission along with some other new features which we'll get to see on this review. But first, let's take a look at the exterior. As we all know, the Espresso is Suzuki's smallest hatchback offering for the Philippine market and it's a little over three years old now. But it still looks cute, it still looks funky, and you know what? It still has an appeal of its own. Then it sits very upright and very high, so it's more of a race hatchback. What's new for 2023 are these 14-inch wheels. Compared to the previous ones that had steel and hubcaps, these are now two-tone alloys. And of course, it still has that ground clearance that's similar to most crossovers, 180 millimeters. As you can see from the back, well, nothing has changed. So you still have the C-style daylights as well as the body cladding down below. And here is where you see the Espresso's, you know, raised ride height. Just look at this ground clearance right here. So you don't have to worry much about when you're parking at the malls on those parking stoppers. No problem at all for this hatchback. Now to access the cargo area, it's either you use your keys or go to the driver's seat to access the hatch down below. Now, once you open this up, you get 17 inches of length, 30 inches of width, and around 36 inches of height. So once we remove this, and we fold down the second row seats, your cargo area stretches to 43 inches of length. And by the way, the espresso comes with the sorry, early warning device, as well as your jack is right here, your pair of tools, and the spare tire that you can locate down below. It's a steel wheel. Right? So let's check out the engine. Wow, ang cute ng makina. Well, powering the Espresso is a 1-liter 3-cylinder engine called the K10B. So essentially, this is the same engine that's powering the Celerio hatchback. So it has 67 PS and 90 newton meters of torque. And as I've mentioned earlier, this one now comes with the auto gear shift or Suzuki's version of the automated manual transmission. It's front-wheel drive and we'll get to see more of how this performs once we're driving. But first, let's check out the interior. Simple would be the most fitting way to describe the espresso when you sit on the second row. Because you have basically the essentials. So you have three-point seat belts on either sides, a lap belt on the center, and isofix anchors for your child seats. You also have a pocket here in the middle. And when it comes to the sitting position, well, it's almost as if I was sitting on a dining chair because of how high it is. You can see Suzuki did this to maximize the space and from the headroom, the knee room, and the elbow room, it's very much okay for a guy of my size. And um, one more thing, you guys know what this is? So for the kids watching at home, this is where the term roll down your windows came from. Thanks for that line, Marcos. Now that we're here in front, this is where we see Suzuki's cleverness in terms of designing the Espresso's cabin. Just take a look at the dashboard. You know, it somewhat gives that mini vibes, but what's important to know is that Suzuki integrated most of the main features and functions of 
the espresso such as the gauge cluster, the air conditioning, even the power window switches are right here in the middle. So why did they do this? Basically, Suzuki did this to simplify the manufacturing and assembly process of the car. Because when you have more part sharing with your left-hand drive and your right-hand drive units, you get to save on cost. That's the execution they did with the Celerio, the Jimny, and right here, the Espresso. But that's not to say they scrimped too much on the Espresso because, you know, okay, most of the things you see here are made of plastic, but the quality is okay. And, you know, the steering wheel still feels nice to the touch, even if it's just urethane, and even has the steering wheel functions for the infotainment system. And speaking of which, you know, connectivity is such an essential part these days, nowadays. So what Suzuki did was to put in a 7-inch touchscreen that comes standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And also, the Espresso has dual SRS airbags here in front, and it comes standard with ABS and even traction control. As fuel efficient as this Espresso is, it even has a fuel saving feature called the EASS or the Engine Auto Start Stop System, which basically turns the engine off when you're just idling. And then once you let off the brakes, well, that's, it puts the engine back on. And of course, the main change for the Espresso is that it now comes with this one, the AGS. So let's go out for the drive so I can show you how this works. Now that we're behind the wheel of the Espresso, let's talk a bit more about its new feature called the AGS or the Auto Gear Shift. Basically, it's Suzuki's version of an automated manual transmission. And yes, we'd like to call it like that because the AGS behaves more like a manual transmission than your typical automatic. Let's say, for example, the CVT or a torque converter automatic that you just, you know, press the throttle and off you go. No, the AGS uh, behaves different from CVT or normal torque converter automatic because you know to drive it smoothly you still have to take your foot off the gas whenever you do the shifting so para just a manual transmission that you have to uh, press the throttle and then let it off it's almost as if you're change you're the one changing gears and then step on it again so to have a smooth experience with the AGS, from my experience, it works better that way than just simply, you know, naka, ano ka lang, nakapatong lang yung foot mo sa, sa throttle. And now that we got that over with, let's talk a bit more about the Espresso's driving characteristics. So guys, as you would know, I own a hatchback, so yeah, I'm having a lot of fun driving the espresso from the past few days even though I'm stuck in traffic right now in EDSA now, but speaking of EDSA yeah it's very easy to maneuver it's very easy to park and I want to show you something that I did back at the Auto Industria office a bit earlier do you remember the time you first learned how to drive you know the time when you've already mastered the controls for the vehicle but somehow, when you end up on a parking slot, well, things start to go back to zero. Well, with the Suzuki Espresso, it's very, very easy. And the learning curve for parking, especially in parallel parking, is very simple, which I'll show you. We're here at the AutoIndustria.com office, and there's, there are very tight parking slots around this area. But for the Suzuki Espresso, it doesn't seem to be quite a problem. Which I'll show you.
Ka siya. See, that's the benefit you get on the size, the height, and the wheelbase of a car like this. But then again, you know, the espresso also has its cons with the way it was designed. So, for one, the short wheelbase means once you're here at EDSA or on a bumpy road, the ride comfort won't be as pleasant as you would say on a sedan or a bigger hatchback or even in a crossover. And when you go over bumps, you know, it's very easy because it's very high. So you can get over them without ever worrying about scraping the underbelly. However, the espresso could get tossed around a bit because it's also very lightweight. Now, once you get to the expressways, you know, the boxy design of the espresso, you do have to make a more conscious effort when driving the espresso at high speeds so keeping it straight because you know you can feel the crosswinds a bit more with this uh, tall ride height and boxy styling a bit similar to what I experienced with the Jimny so yeah you have to take note of that once you're driving the espresso but when it comes to fuel economy, that's where the espresso really shines. So even in this AGS variant, I'm doing around 12 kilometers per liter on the city at an average speed of 17 kilometers per hour. So pretty heavy traffic like what I'm experiencing right now here at EDSA. And on the highways, on an average speed of 67 kilometers per hour, I did north of 20 kilometers per liter. So it's very economical and very practical on the daily drive. So yes, uh, basically I have these functions that I need, you know, all the essentials that you know, would make a pleasant daily driving. So I think the espresso does tick the boxes when it comes to a starter car. And for its starting price, well, let's head back to the warehouse and talk about that. The Suzuki Espresso has always been one of our favorites, since Suzuki made the most out of a very small package. And now that it has AGS and a couple more smartphone features, you get an extra dose of convenience. It's a nice starter car for a starter price. The Espresso AGS sells for 660,000 pesos, while the 5-speed manual version costs around 620,000 pesos. So what do you think of the Suzuki Espresso? Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. This is Jamil Lacuna of AutoIndustria.com. Thank you for watching.